Good afternoon and welcome to the ESI studio. With us today we have Noel Govin, CFO and Executive Board Member from EDM in Mozambique. Welcome Noel. Thank you. I would like to find out from you what are some of the key trends that you are noticing in Mozambique as well as the rest of Africa in terms of power and energy? Thank you. Um, I think if I go back to Mozambique specifically, four to five years ago, Mozambique used to be a heavily hydro a power generation uh, country where 80% uh, of the electricity produced used to be hydro. With the recent discoveries of gas, um, Mozambique is shifting significantly the mix towards gas uh, to where gas now accounts to about 30-40% of the energy mix. Uh, so, and this is the trend that I see, not just in Mozambique, but as we move towards the region also, um, gas getting a much bigger space in the mix of electricity supply. Um, I also see that renewal, renewable energy is, uh, is getting momentum. Mozambique alone is uh, just started with its first project, solar project that uh, for 41 megawatts in Mokuba. Uh, and we also have another similar project that is going to start in the near future for another 41 megawatts up in the north. So, I mean, if I was to just look at the trends of how I see the uh, energy sector in Mozambique and Africa, I would say that uh, the, um, the energy, the, the um, sorry, I would say that gas and renewables would take up much of the uh, role that hydro has played in the recent past. Interesting, uh, and yes, I believe that that is very much in line with with the trends that we are seeing um, in terms of the rest of sub-Saharan Africa as well. Uh, thank you for your insights, Noel. When I was doing some research on, on EDM, it, uh, you seem to be doing fantastic work in terms of electrification uh, within Mozambique. Can you talk us through what are some of the strategies that EDM is employing to achieve uh, this, this universal electrification goal? Okay. Well, first of all, I have to say that um, if you look at the electrification rate in Mozambique, we're sitting at about 26, 27% of uh, the population that has access to electricity today. So obviously aligned with the United Nations target, we've set a very stretched target of uh, electrifying the whole of Mozambique by 2030. So which means that we have electrified 74% of the Mozambican population that don't have access today. It's a huge stretch. Now, those challenges meant that EDM had to, to some extent reinvent itself. And hence the reason why we've recently started on the transformation path that includes um, an inward introspection from recruiting executive directors <laughs> through uh, competitive bids, which was never done in the past, and moving down the ladder with directors and management roles. So that is fundamental for us to actually embrace the challenges of the future, and being one of them, the electrification of Mozambique. Now, that alone is not enough. Uh, we have to redesign the business model of EDM because up to now EDM has been doing the commercial side and also the social side. And it's just not financial viable for EDM to support that. So recently, um, we embarked on the review of the National Electrification Strategy, which is nearly um, uh, close to be approved. And the National Electrification Strategy also looks at how should the sector be structured, specifically with EDM. So the idea is that we'd remove the social segment, the social part of the business from EDM, and it becomes, uh, if I can put it this way, the government's responsibility, and EDM uh, focus on the commercial viable business. So that changes the complete mindset of how we look at the sector today. But that not only changes the mindset, but it also attracts to focus on the funding of the social uh, infrastructure. Because remember, Mozambique is a fast country. So there, it's, uh, because it's fast, that means that you have to extend a network for low density areas and it's not financial viable. So some of the, the strategies that we're also adopting is to do mini grids and off-grid solutions in remote areas. And as the network expands, then we bring those into the network. So. 
that's that's from an infrastructure point of view. Now, in terms of what that means to electrify 100 percent by 2030, um, I have to say that whilst in the in the past years we've been averaging anywhere between 80 to 100 thousand new connections, if we were to achieve the 100 percent, that means that we have to up those connections from 100,000 to about 400,000 new connections per year for the next 13 years. So no way EDM could do it in the current business model, but by stripping off what's commercial and what's social, that means that we will then create what we call an electrification account, which will be funded through donors, grants, uh, government, and EDM, and other players specifically for what we call non-obligation areas, mostly rural areas. So I think in, in summary that's the strategy that uh, has a sector, not just EDM, that we are putting in place to make sure that we achieve the universal access by 2030. Very interesting insights and I'm sure there are many utilities out there who would like to, to hear more from you. That's all we have time for. Thank you so much Noel and, and thank you very much to our viewers for watching. My name is Pamela Lark, Senior Writer for ESI Africa reporting from African Utility Week.